Hey, I'm the Kevin Gamer, and welcome to Pro Cycling Manager 2021. We're going to undertake the Pro Cyclist mode in this series. We're on episode number one, just ready to get started. We are going to have a stage racer for this one, and that's going to be the focus on this series. But first off, let me get this part out of the way real quick. I've been playing this game for a long time, and I play on the highest difficulty level, and even then I still tend to find this game much too easy. So to avoid the boredom that comes with just winning all the time, especially very, very quickly, I add challenges to the game. Now, last year, the challenge that I added to Pro Cyclist mode succeeded in being overly challenging, it turns out. I still managed to win the world championships. I was the rainbow bands wearer, but all in all, I was not terribly competitive. That being said, the three challenges I placed, well, they were a bit too much. And all three of those challenges were right here on this screen that we're looking at right now. First challenge, main axis, Barador, as in breakaway specialist, like the worst possible one you could take. Second challenge, and again, where I kind of went wrong with this, secondary axis, totally blank. You don't have to pick a, a secondary axis, and I didn't, and I suffered for it. I was a bare door with nothing in support. Third, lowest potential possible. That combination led us to be a very weak rider, and then I focused on potential gains since we had low potential and skipped a couple levels of possible upgrades, making it that much harder. Oh, and, and then the other factor that, that added into that challenge that made it extra difficult, I went for balanced attributes, meaning I took whatever was the lowest and raised that. Turns out that you have a cap on levels and other factors going in and a cap on your limit and all of that. I didn't know all of that going into that series last year. Found that out as we went along and went, okay, okay. We limited ourselves a little too much. But I still pulled off wins from time to time. And like I said, I was still the world champion. So all in all, yes, it was hard and it was a bit too hard, but it still wasn't totally out of our reach. This year, we're going to take a big step back in that, but we are going to make a challenge. There's still going to be a challenge. Just going in and crushing it is not, not going to be the case this year. I am going to be a stage racer with a climbing secondary axis. Now, the, the two choices you have as a stage racer are to either go as a time trialist or as a climber with your secondary axis. If we go as a time trialist, you can see we add three points of flat, and this is going to be more about kind of the potential side than anything else, but you add three points, points of flat, nothing additional to the time trial, though I'm sure the cap would be a little higher, and only one point of prologue, but again, slightly higher cap. Not much actually being impacted. But if we go to climber, you're going to see a substantial difference. One mountain, okay, plus one point. Hills, plus two point. Yes, it's better. It's stronger. It's good. Time trial and prologue actually slightly weaker. So it is bringing us down a notch. But look at this one. Acceleration, plus nine. Plus nine to acceleration. That is a massive difference. That is something that goes from completely irrelevant, not present, you're just surviving as a climber who can time trial a bit, to dang, th this is somebody who's a lot more punchy, who's somebody who can be a lot quicker, can win as a climber, as a puncher. And because your primary access is stage racer, while we might not be an elite time trialist getting tons of wins, you should still be able to grow and develop into a pretty dang good time trialist as that's the primary axis. If climber was primary axis, not necessarily, but with the main axis of stage racer looking pretty dang good. Now, possible other route, and let's just see what happens if we go with a climber and a time trialist. The two things that make up a good stage racer, what do we get from that? Flat rating similar to to what we had in the alternative version uh, mountain just one point below where we would have been in the other version time trial prologue not great 
acceleration is definitely a bit better, but it seems like a weaker version, right? Because the time trial is so weak there. And where we're boosting it to 64 still doesn't feel like much. So I think you're still better off as a stayed racer climber than breaking that up into the two individual components that make it up. Because again, the 67's better, 69, better. We're only one point worse here. Uh, the acceleration, ultimately better. The overall sprint is a couple points worse, worse. But I mean, come on, we don't need to be a great sprinter. We need to get separation, keeping that is going to have more to do with this ability. I did say that there's going to be a challenge. Here's the challenge. I'm going to take one team, and I'm going to stay with that team for the entirety of the series. And here's that team. Hoggins, Berman, Axion. Now, this Axion, Hoggins, Berman team, here's a breakdown of the team itself, what they're all about. It's a U23 development team on purpose. Their manager, Axel Merckx, former pro, son of the GOAT, Eddie Merckx, Hoggins Berman. That's their sponsor, corporate sponsor. It's a litigation firm. But the neon with Axel Merckx's name, that neon sponsor, that's the Axion. So Axel slash neon equals Axion. But it's a team that intentionally takes U23 riders and develops them, prepares them for the pro ranks. They're a continental team based in the U.S. You can see from the top here, not quite two-star rating, 14 riders. I would already come in immediately as the third best rider on the team and the best stage racer on the team. My role with the team, clear and obvious. The goal is not only to develop as one of the best riders in the world, but to carry the team to be one of the great teams in the world. Let's see what we can do. Not a lot has changed about last year's game to this year's game, but one thing that has changed is the objectives system. Now, the reason why it's changed is they completely revamped it for the career mode, and that change has carried over into pro cyclist mode as well. System works ultimately the same. The, the old training model for fitness levels is totally gone. Now you have three types of form, three types of fitness levels is just generic general fitness. And then you have in form, which will lead often to fitness peaks. And then you have the period following that. Now, not a hundred percent of those, but many of those will come with that roller coaster downswing of fatigue where you need to recover. And you can see from our objective screen here, it's totally blank through here. That's your generic general form. In the green is where you are in some form of fitness peak for a period of time. And then you have your drop. You have your follow-up for a week or two weeks where you're recovering post-event. Uh, and they time it around the event. So now you're picking a number of object objectives. So where you previously just had a few objectives for the year, now you can focus on specific races. What caters to your type of rider? When do you want that type of rider to be in their best form? You want a sprinter to be prepared for all their sprint races that they're going to do for the year. You want your climber at your climbing events, and so on and so forth. And so we've prepared for that. Now, if you overdo it, right, that those break periods could be an issue. They could be a real issue. So we'll see if this is too much, if we've overdone it this season. It's the first time I'm really using this properly. And we'll see. I've picked a number of races and, and we'll try to see if those are the ones we can kind of key in on for the year. So the first thing I've done is I've actually gone through and I've tried to match my objectives with what's on the actual calendar. I'm only given 15 points to work with to alter my calendar on this first season as we have a very simple contract. Now in future seasons, I'll get a better and better contract with the team. They'll love and adore me and I'll be able to run whatever schedule I want. With only 15 points, there isn't much I can do to get the San Juan race on the calendar. I would have needed seven points to get Rwanda on the calendar. I needed seven points to get Istria on the calendar. I was going to need five points. I don't have enough to do all of those. 
and looking through, I decided that only one of those three was actually worth spending the points uh, to get, to keep on the calendar. Like San Juan, for instance, seven stages, but only one climbing stage and one short time trial. Not exactly the best race to get my hands on first. So I'm going to remove that. But for whatever reason, the Herald Tour, it, it kind of messes that one up too. So I'm going to take that off and then put it back on. Add that back on and you see, there you go, it's it's refit now. Uh, the Istria one though, so we don't need to waste the extra objectives there. And that actually frees me up to maybe take one of my other calendar events and throw it on here as an objective just to make sure I have the peak at the right time. However, uh, looking at what we have here, seven objectives is already quite a bit for the year. And I, th I think we're fine keeping it as it is but all seven of these races will be among my races for the year. And now I should start seeing some race day condition bonuses for a lot of the events that I participate in, especially the ones that I want to participate in. I'll quick sim a lot of those classics that are flat or three stage races that are flat throughout. They're just filler. They're just days to, to get the legs moving. And so I don't need to actually participate in those. But the races that I will be participating in, unlike in previous years, we're going to see those race day condition situations looking a lot more favorable. And I, I like that. One thing I've noticed, though, that the game is kind of messing up on and they need to fix is by looking in the objective system, I can already see my entire team and how good or not good they are. And meanwhile, that's supposed to be hidden information. I'm not supposed to know who any of, of my teammates are at this point, so oops. They need to fix that. Being that I'm back on Grand Champion for potential this year, that means our XP gain base per month is 50 points. That's what we get for training and developing as a rider. Level 1, 50 points. So, even though we haven't even participated in our first race yet, just through training, we're going to hit level 2. Let's go ahead and get straight into that development. And now that I really know the database in a way that I didn't know previously, I know how our development can be best used to really, really reach peak development as a writer. There's a couple ways to make that happen. First lesson on that, by the way, never develop potential. Always, always take progression of attributes. Your potential, that's it. it it's set in stone. You only get to level up 20 times. And raising potential isn't going to actually help you gain any points. You have what you have. Take it. Deal with it. So as a stage racer, you can see we can pick up two points already, get it over 70 for mountain. That's nice. Hills, time trial, and prologue all coming up being uh, at a more tolerable level. And the resistance and recovery coming up, I think we're probably going to start right away with our specialty, which is stage racing. If we go with classics, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to bother with that. As a climber, uh, we would develop similarly. Don't see any advantage going that way. And I don't see us gaining anything in time trial that's going to be helpful either. So stage racer it is. Also, we pick up our first skill point. Now, where and how to use this, there's different ways. There's different methods to go. I can tell you right now that Discovery is going to be the last train that we go down. There's no reason to go anywhere else, especially knowing my teammates. I'm going to be on the same team throughout. I'm going to get to know my teammates. We'll get new te teammates coming in, but we'll know them in time. Plus, we already discovered a bug where I could tell you the averages of my teammates immediately. Maybe not their attribute breakdown, but their overall strength. Some race bonuses are nice. I don't need those immediately, though. I'm going to have no problem re-signing, so I don't think I need to worry about network for a while. I do like the idea of gaining more XP each month because we're going to level up faster. And that's going to be a key. So my challenge here, right, stay with the same team. But I told you that this team develops under 23 riders. So if I hit 24 years of age, I'm no longer under 23. I think I should find it within myself to be a world champion by the time I'm age 23. So we need to be leveling up pretty fast if that's going to happen. So that could be somewhere that I start attentiveness. Fitness peak bonus is still the same, and yet they've changed how that works. 
uh, curious that that is what it is. But I'm going to go ahead and spend my first three points getting the attentive attentiveness all the way up. All right, so we're going to kick off our first ever race. However, I, I skipped ahead. It's stage number two. They want me as a Baradour. Ouch. Oh, my goodness. And I start with a minus three. <laughs> so first race, and I already get hit pretty dang hard. A minus three race day condition, even though I'm in peak fitness 97%. Uh, had a race day condition modifier of either a zero or a plus one. So there was no reason for me to have a negative modifier at all. It is what it is. We get a minus three. So we're in the break. We catch on early. Hopefully uh, the three of us are able to get away. Uh, Moriera and Bias, Bice, uh, a couple unknown guys. Meanwhile, behind us, people are busy, active. I don't need... I don't know either of these riders. We'll see if we are able to get away. Uh, currently, we're holding a 40-second gap. And then you're getting those kind of continual attacks behind that make it hard for us to get away because they're chasing those guys down. But meanwhile, we've now pulled that out to over a minute. So we've got a good, good shot being near the front of the peloton at the start. Makes a massive difference. You can see how behind there was those continual attacks. But because we were able to take off immediately, the three of us got away in the first couple of kilometers. No and it looks likely that we're going to be able to hang on. Once you get two minutes, though, that's when you know it's secure. Away, right now, uh, we're definitely not speed. there yet. Peloton really has not given us uh, the leash we need at this point, just over a minute ahead. And energy definitely winding down. That minus three not helping. Flat rating base is a 60 so being at a 58 is atrocious uh resistance stamina both mid 50s and a minus four to each really hurts really really hurts we're down to 50 seconds so peloton not letting us go uh, my objective i'll collect something today we've hit 25 percent of our objective uh but i'm looking likely to be in a heap of trouble here i think i might be dropping back to the peloton quite soon I might be able to climb that 71 mountain, but I certainly can't ride on the flat terribly well in a small group of three. Gap out to a minute 45, though. So the peloton is easing off in now two minutes. I think they're going to let us go. We dropped the, uh, the other rider, but if we're lifting tempo, he might get back and we might get and stay away at two and a half minutes. We have made it. We have just, just made it. And the three of us together, and now in that recovery mode, pace is going to start to pick up slightly as we settle into things. But 50% of the objective now is excellent. Reminder, we're on stage number two. I'm not interested in gaining seconds or doing anything like that. I'm not going to have the points jersey. So this sprint point coming up, not going to be a thing. I do not want to contest it. But they might want to, and they might try to attack, which is a bit of a worry. 1k to go. They do attack. We're going to speed up a little bit, and hopefully we can get back on without uh, a loss of energy. They pick up the tempo a little bit. Come on, Mr. Gamer. Get back up there. Boy, we're struggling to get back up there. That's that flat rating. And I'm running low on energy. This is what I worried about with them attacking. But they, I mean, I'm doing 75. They were doing 57. There, there was not exactly a, an issue of pace. But we do get back on only just as we go and hit this Category 3 climb and likely get dropped. But I'm, I'm faster as a climber. No, that's going to really hurt because they attack to go for the KOM point. I pick up two points going over third. Those are the first KOM points of... This race, even though we're on stage number three, uh, sorry, stage two now. Maverick protecting me. That's good. I don't think I got to 75%. I might have. What was the 60 of 90? That's two thirds. That's not 75%. And I'm on the verge of getting dropped. There are world tour teams here, by the way, so, uh, there was pretty much no expectation. 
we'll get some XP on the day for the work we did in the break, but it's not going to be a whole lot. And here we go. Low on energy. Towards the back. I'm a decent climber, but there we go. I just crashed. Not crashed, but ran out of energy. And I'm still not the first guy out on my team. And I'm still out climbing a lot of people. There's that strength in the ability to climb, even though I had no energy at the base of the climb. All right, we are recovering some energy. I'm okay on the downhill, but not with the uh, minus three on there right now. Alaphilippe has won the stage ahead of Marc Soler and Johnny Mascan. And sprinted out to the finish. 134th, our first ever stage. Uh, but the key thing here is we'll pick up a little bit of XP. So we already start with 25 points for being in our first breakaway short and our first medium length breakaway. And then we get a decent evaluation on the day, which is a whopping two points. Not great, but 27 is already a step in the right direction. And we've moved forward to stage number four, and we have the same He's tactical approach. They want us in the break. This time, though, I'm a lot further back down the peloton. You can see we're struggling to find a way through at the moment. I mean, I'm high on effort, but I'm currently not finding a gap. Teammate Trisner's already to able to go clear. Slip. He's the second rider to go clear. The first rider's already over a minute up the road. And this is going to make life really difficult because, A, they're not going to want two guys from the same team up the road. But, B, there's already minimum three riders that have gone clear. And I'm still only just getting up to the front quarter or so of the uh, of the peloton right now. And we're looking at at least 30 seconds to the next rider up the road. Between the breakaway and the pack. This is a really good spot to try to get a gap. We go clear. Something a little punchy. That little bit of acceleration. Breakaway, See if they the let front. me go. Right now they seem to be, though I'm not the only one who tried to open a gap, and that's a little worrying. Let's keep that sprint going as we go up this next little hill and see if we can close that gap down quick. We've got Duvall, we've got our teammate Drizners, and Scarseth. Is Duvall able to go with me? I'm not the only one. Look at that. There's six more, seven more riders off behind us. But getting quickly to Duvall, if the four of us can get to the front and start working together. I like our odds of actually succeeding as a breakaway today. And there you go, four together at the front. Nobody's supporting it at the moment though. They're waiting for help to come, the pack is or they're not happy because there's two teammates be in the, the group, breakaway. or they think we're gonna get caught. Andrade also off the front. We've got a third team member that has gone clear from the peloton. This actually could be a really good thing if the move works. Eight chasing behind. They are 50 seconds ahead. We're a further 40 seconds up the road. And I'm the only one doing any work right now. Try to back off a little bit and see what happens. Drizner's route now ready to contribute. Now together, 12 riders. The lead over the pack 37 seconds. The Let's see if we can open this gap the up. I like having a group of 12. I like having two teammates here with me. The pack has just reeled in the escape oh, but the, the peloton definitely did not like having 12 of us up the road. Okay, here we go again. Are very high. Four like going clear. The I'm the only teammate this time. Fideli, Christian, and Hinsgall Madsen. Five now, as we're joined by Nikki Terpstra. There's a strong rider in the group. If we were to stay away, you would make him an easy favorite to win the stage. The pack really doesn't look interested in following the but we've pulled a Things good gap already. Time. Minute 46. Thank you for waiting till the last second to go for the attack. That helped us stay in check and not lose out this time. Two and a half minutes up the road, one guy in no man's land, and we're starting to back off, settle things down. 25% objective, so we're in for some XP for the day. Okay, we've had a fair bit of undulation already. It is together. They caught up. Who is it? Stedman. 
Stedman has joined the uh, foray here at the front. Let's go ahead and grab some water. 77k to go. Only need to get water one more time. I'm not a fan of this climb. We're going to hit it five times. It's the same climb each time. And then you've got a bit of a plateau. It doesn't just drop down the other side of the hill. And it's going to be a little bit painful as we approach it. And we have definitely not recovered yet from our effort to get into the break. Our two efforts, our dual efforts that it took. Now, I would imagine somebody's going to go for this, like myself. Slow it down here. Another attack in the leading group. The pack is slowly whittling away. Oh, red bar fades just before the line, and we drop out completely. I would imagine somebody from the breakaway today is going to win the King of the Mountains for the overall, uh, as there's... How many stages? One more stage to go, and I believe it's another sprint stage for the final stage. So, this being the last punchy stage, whoever wins the stage is going to only replicate what's happened four times previous, and as we're now just four click K, it's not going to be me though. I might be a good climber, but you can see just how low my energy is right now. I think I need to just hang on and survive and get whatever points I get, because... If I attack this, I might not be around by the time we even reach the, the next climb. Some gaps. We've already dropped one guy. And you can see, even without an attack, I am out of energy as we hit the top. I just don't have any resistance yet. Today, the fitness is what some it could be, should be, the fact that there is a what we expected. I mean, I've got a plus one today. Uh, trying to make contact. I'm guessing... Terpstra got dropped. Got just one. Ah, we got so close there. Okay, we're getting a little bit of recovery now. You see that? I don't mind still being in front of the peloton and picking up some points and moving up the order a little bit. Be nice to have a decent finishing position in the KOM competition. So if we can manage this well enough, we can stay ahead of the peloton long enough. I'm definitely losing ground, but a decent enough climber that I'm ultimately hanging. Oh my goodness! There, no, no. Look at that! Look at that pace! Yikes! <laughs> and they came hard and fast. Look at that the breakaway is down to just two riders. Nizolo, as in sprinter, but still Nizolo gets dropped. The green jersey wearer. Definitely not going to do any chasing. My job was to be in the break. Thank you, thank you, teammate. I have water now. I was getting a little worried about that because I was focused on the racing and forgot to get water. Oops, my bad. All right, well, big splits. Uh, now, being in a large group, I've been able to do a fair bit of recovery. I think I can actually move forward a bit. Uh, on the climbs to come, and let's see if I can. Mountain rating's my best, so staying at 85 is good. Ease off now. Ease off. Okay, well, we definitely left the bulk of the group behind. I've got a small group of six here, but we did not bridge any gaps ahead of us. Basically went from the fifth group on the road to the fourth group on the road and left a bunch of teammates behind. You can already see I'm now the the highest placed rider on my team. Obviously I already was with the breakaway, but it's gotten even better. 3k to go. I'm going to begin the final climb. Uh, I don't have as much energy this time, so we're going to take an 83 as the pace instead of the 85. We pass the young Ineos rider. There's Stedman, who we were in the break with. Pascalon cut me off here. Uron has won the stage ahead of Shockman and Solaire. Alaphilippe took fourth. Surprised he did not win this thing. Rowan Dennis also in the top five. Pidcock only uh, ninth place. That's poor performance for him. Okay, 300 meters from the end. I've run out of energy, but that's why I didn't go as hard. So we got... Knocked back a little bit in placement, but we get 48th on the stage. So my first hilltop finish could have gone better, could have gone much, much worse. Part of our placement 
had to do with the fact that we spent most of the day in the breakaway were already used up, washed up well before the finish. But we went from second lowest in the team after we got dropped, after we were caught by the peloton, to finishing top of the team. So we moved ahead of a whole lot of riders. I mean, we're looking around somewhere around 134th or 135th where we were placed. We finished 48th. So we moved up nearly 90 spots after we initially got dropped. That's pretty good, I'd say. All right, task again. Final stage, only 80 kilometers, and it's get in the break. I like the odds on this one a little bit better because, well, it's flat. And B, I'm starting right from the front. And C, with a nice short stage, they're going to come hard. They're going to come chasing, but... They're not going to want to be messing around for long because we're already approaching the end. So if they're going to allow any sort of break, they're going to allow it to go fairly quick comparatively. So three riders gone clear. We've got another four, a fourth rider now, and we're just 16 seconds ahead. Tagliani, Christian again, and Abramson. That's the finish line. And, oh, come on, those guys attacking on. Boy, this thing is just winding constantly. And I think we're going to just have to go pretty hard and do what we can. I mean, in terms of position, I'm 91st overall, so it doesn't matter about my position. But that bonus, that plus six on stamina and resistance, can and should be used to our advantage as best we can make of it. I'm, I haven't even taken a turn. That's how weak I am in terms of flat rating. We are 21 seconds ahead is all from the peloton. The riders are getting dropped. So that just goes to show how hard they are pushing. I'm getting nothing out of being in group number two on the road. Got to be in the front group to get credit. Finally, I get a turn. He's not working right now. I'm having to put the uh, kilometers into the legs. I have stretched it out a little bit. I've added four seconds off the front of the peloton. And closed it down by four seconds on this chase group. Uh, you can see he's really struggling now, and I've left him behind. Will he get caught by the peloton and they finally sit up? Please, oh please. 24 seconds ahead, and he has been caught. Let's see if that gap opens, because I am now out of energy. Wanti Gobert is pushing really hard their whole team here at the front working for van poppel presumably their leader and that's it those guys have been caught but i have no energy otherwise i would uh gladly attack at this point pace really has not lifted that group that was dropped and they're not coming back yeah pace not quite as bad but i'm not recovering Let's see, heart rate, 145. I don't have any teammates to offer protection, so I can't call for help. They're moving along at a fair lick. You've just got to hang on. So I'm in a survival mode. Let's survive for a little bit. Let's see what happens. Okay, heart rate a little better. I've improved a little bit. Still no breakaway. I would love to try to break away, but it's just not going to go anywhere with this lack of energy and this type of pace. That's why nobody's attacking right now. I'd love to go collect Here's some XP. At this point I'll have to just to kinda push the towards the finish. 18k. Andrade has crashed. Can oh I try a breakaway now? I'm not gonna win. I'm gonna get crushed. I'm gonna get left behind, but I can get a few kilometers at We've the front. Get a little bit of credit. Can I even get forward though? I'm trying to go forward. I can't. My flat rating is so bad. No, it's not going to work. It's not working. This I need to just stay put. <laughs> 11k to go. I'm going backwards. But I learned something. People have been telling me, get clipless pedals. Get them. <laughs> and then GCN showed me just how slow I am compared to what I could should be. Hey, let's go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Come on. Sprint finish. Go, go, go. 
Zolo wins the stage ahead of Van Poppel. That's who Wanty Gobert was working for. Airbro grabs third on the stage, and we have done it. We've finished our first race. 55th place overall, surrounded by teammates, all in a very similar position. Andrade, after his crash, never made it back on, uh, considering how I was pretty dead when I got caught and the peloton never lifted pace. Just the fact that I even still made it in the peloton was a big deal. First race finished 20 points. First stage uh, first stage race, 20 points. First race, 10 points. So there's an extra 30. I won't get much for the stage because we only got three kilometers off the front. Uh, but that's now at 59. So a turn of the month or our next race should see us hit our next level. And we'll just keep pushing forward as we get things like a flat rating and some resistance and some stamina will be a lot more competitive because the 71 mountains definitely not bad uh, but those other parts very bad that is going to do it for this first episode though be sure to like subscribe comment to help that youtube algorithm get this thing on the go pro cyclist mode most of us who do pcm content tend to stay away from pro cyclist mode and you'll get one or two short series last season ended up a short series for me because well i kind of messed it up by making it too hard but the season before as far as i knew i was the only one who went through the whole year with a complete pro cyclist series let's see if we can make this one the complete pro cyclist series of this year because i think pcm 20 i don't believe any of us had a full pro cyclist mode uh, series a complete one and so let's see what we can do uh, though i did get all the way to the last level i suppose last time anyway i'm a Catholic gamer appreciate you being here again like comment subscribe and i'll see you next time have a good one be safe out there bye for now